So Surrey History Centre have asked me to speak about what, for me, is one of their most exciting sources, a photograph album assembled in the late 19th century by Mrs Brushfield, the wife of the superintendent of Brookwood Asylum. Brookwood was Surrey's second county asylum and was opened in 1867. In 1869, there were 244 male and 291 female patients, but by the early 1880s, there were just over 1,000 patients in total. Brookwood was part of a new nationwide system that was developed from the mid-19th century when the government made it compulsory for all counties and boroughs to provide for the mentally ill. Lunatic asylums, as they were known to contemporaries, have a frightening reputation in popular culture as dark and intimidating spaces where patients were subject to unspecified treatments. But while there were many problems with these places, recently historians have begun to go back to the archives to find out more about them. And this is why the Brushfield album is such a fascinating document, as it is filled with photographs that provide us with a unique visual insight into the asylum world. Mrs Brushfield was clearly closely engaged with her husband's work, and the album presents many different aspects of asylum life, including buildings, grounds and staff, patients working in the fields, the asylum band and the chapel. Of course, we can't simply read the images in the album as a direct window onto the everyday life of the asylum. Taking a photograph was a difficult technical process in the 19th century, especially indoors, and these images were arranged and staged. Because photos were often a public document, and I think we can assume that Mrs Brushfield's album would have been displayed to visitors, how the asylum was presented was often very carefully curated. So let's take a closer look at one particular image from the album. It is a photograph of a female ward and shows patients, staff and furniture and fittings. Everyone is sitting very neatly and precisely and is clean and well dressed. What is striking about it is the calm and orderly environment. From the mid 19th century onwards, it was for Norman asylums to use what was known as moral treatment, a system by which patients were kept warm and dry, given decent food and clothing, and encouraged to live and work according to normal domestic routines. Moral treatment may sound like common sense today, but in the 19th century it was a new development, pioneered by Quakers in the late 18th century and adopted in the new large-scale asylums that were founded in the Victorian period. Looking at this photograph shows us the efforts asylum staff had gone to to create a domestic environment for the patients. There is a floral wallpaper, carefully selected prints, and the room is full of plants and, and flowers, as well as a few wardian cases. There are some comfortable chairs, occasional tables, and both the tables and mantelpiece are heavily draped. My personal favourites are the table covers, perhaps crocheted by the patients themselves. The case books tell us that female patients were sometimes employed in such endeavours. It is easy to imagine, though, how this room could have looked very different at other times. Wards could sometimes be noisy and disorderly, and furniture and other goods were often broken. And of course, we can't tell from these what we can't tell from these images is what the patients made of the material world around them. So we need to turn to other sources patient case books and letters if they survive, to find out. Luckily, Surrey History Centre have an abundance of these, so when we can, we'll all be able to return to the archives and find out more. Thanks for listening.